When you've got tyrannical warlords and intergalactic bounty hunters on your trail, there's only one man to call, and that's Shep Ramsey. Today we discuss quite possibly Hulk Hogan's greatest movie. <laughs> it's 1991 Suburban Commando, next on Drew Reviews. So getting into my story of Suburban Commando, you know, in 1990, I was watching a lot of wrestling. And so, you know, Earthquake jumped on Hulk Hogan's chest and put him out. They had a Get Well Hulkster campaign, and uh, you could write in. So I wrote in to him, and, you know, at the time I was 11 years old. And I got a postcard back, you know, with kind of a lithograph autograph on there. But what it actually was is they were getting addresses, you know, for their mail outs. And so... (laughs) You know, that was my first time as a little kid getting scammed, you know, by the WWF at the time. But that's kind of an interesting story. I thought I'd share that. I've actually got that somewhere. It might be at my parents' house. But Suburban Commando was a movie that I did have around a lot because I was a wrestling fan. I remember a couple of years after it came out, I bought it. And, of course, when you're on summer vacation, and you live out in the middle of nowhere like I did. You either, you know, go out and play in the woods, which I did, or you watch movies. And so I did a lot of that growing up. When I was a kid, this movie was a lot of fun. As an adult, now watching it for the first time in like 20 years, will it hold up? Uh, We'll see. I'm going to get into the plot. So in the very beginning of the movie, you have this tyrannical character named Suter. And he's held the president hostage on his ship. And of course, Shep Ramsey, played by Hulk Hogan, comes in. You know, he's he's putting charges all over this thing. He doesn't save the president, but he does blow Suter up. And so... He gets away, and so the mission's not entirely successful. His superior's kind of coming down on him. He hits his ship and blows his power cell, and so he has to go somewhere and recharge, and the closest place is Earth. Shep Ramsey hates Earthlings. It's kind of a funny scene. So he crash lands in this little former dance hall called, you know, the landing pad. and You know, (laughs) he hits the music, and... And it's got this disco thing going on. <laughs> he's like, oh, I hate Earthlings. So he has to go somewhere because it's going to take like six weeks for his thing to recharge. So so he has to find a place to lay low for like six weeks. And in the meantime, you have this character of Charlie Wilcox, played by the great Christopher Lloyd. And he's a draftsman. And he's got this boss that he just absolutely hates. And so he's going to go in and ask him for a raise, but he never even gets up to bat, as he says. So his wife, played by Shelley Duvall, you know, they need more money. So she ends up taking his shop, which he likes to go into for relaxation, and making it a rental apartment. So you've got Shep Ramsey, who she rents this apartment out to, the gigantic Hulk Hogan. And so the hilarity just starts from there. He's trying to adjust to life, suburban life here on Earth, and going through all the, you know, paces, the little girl with the cat up in the tree. And so he pulls the tree limb down that's not my cat, and lets it go, and the cat goes flying, you know, things like that. The neighbors next door who, you know, they, they park their drag cars out in front of Charlie's driveway, so uh, he's like, that's not right, and he takes him and moves him, and there's a great scene there where they're like, uh, you know what we're going to do to you? Uh, let me guess, you're going to pound my face, and like, what, are you nuts? This is the 90s, we're going to sue you. Uh, that, that's a really good scene. Charlie knows that there's something about Shep that's not right. So he sneaks out to his apartment one night and he finds his stuff. He's got this gun and he shoots it and he blows a hole through the wall and it hits that neighbor's car, and just sets it on fire. But what that does, that sets off an alarm to these bounty hunters who are looking for Shep, you know, this, to send off this energy charge. And so they know where to find him now. And so now these bounty hunters are there, suitors coming in. And that's basically it. Uh, They're trying to survive long enough for Shep to get out of there. Hulk Hogan in this movie is okay. Before this, he had done No Holds Barred. And when I said Hulk Hogan's best movie, and I was kind of grimaced because, you know, none of them are too great. I don't know if I'd put this or No Holds Barred as number one. Probably this, because you've got uh, Christopher Lloyd, who really brings it up. He he does some good acting in this movie, and Shelley Duvall. Hogan's okay. He wasn't very seasoned at this point. I don't think he really got very seasoned, to tell you the truth. 
but Lloyd's really good, you know, in, in some of his dealings with Hulk. And, but there's this great scene in the bank. You know, these bad guys got a hold of one of Shep's guns because Charlie kind of screwed up. And so they've gone in with this freeze ray to, uh, you know, freeze everybody in this bank. And so everybody's frosted over and still, and they're playing Christmas music as they walk in. And that's a great touch to this movie. But I love that scene because the bounty hunters end up coming in, one of which is Mark Calloway, The Undertaker. He had signed with WWE, but he hadn't debuted yet, and I guess Vince really liked him. And so he put him in this movie, and so they have this pretty good fight there. They're fighting over this ray, and Charlie gets frozen. Uh, it's great because later on, uh, Shep's carrying him out over his shoulder, and he's completely stiff as a board like this. Later on, uh, they're having this argument. He's like, I was frozen today! It's <laughs> a great scene. Shelley Duvall's pretty good in this movie. You know, his wife that just wants her husband to stand up for himself to his boss. The action scenes, for the most part, are pretty good, especially there at the end where he's fighting the bounty hunters. I think that one scene's really funny where uh, he kicks the Undertaker's boots together and the jets take off, and so he's going up through ceilings, and he comes up, and he's got a toilet on his head. So pretty good humor there. There are some places in this movie where the humor misses. There's a lot of There's a lot of gags in this movie that just... They don't hold up. Like you got this whole sequence with this mime, and it, it just goes on for a little too long. The first time's really funny. You got you got him, and he's you know doing this thing. Shep comes up to him, is like, "Huh? He's stuck in there. That must be a K seven force field. Don't worry, buddy. I'll get you out of there." Pow! Just knocks him out. They do a couple more gags like that, it's, and they just fall flatter and flatter each time they do them. The scene with the kids on the skateboard is okay. There's this really funny scene, though, with this produce lady on the corner. and She's squeezing these melons, and she's like, you got to make sure they're ripe. And so he takes it, and he's like, boom, and it goes all over. He's like, I got a good one. But for the most part, a lot of these gags just fall really flat. You know, when I was a kid, they were kind of funny, but today they're kind of cringe-inducing. There's a really bad movie mistake in this that my wife even caught when we were watching this, you know, where Charlie shoots that gun, you know, that alerts the bounty hunters they're there. Of course, it goes through the lamp, goes through the wall, and hits the neighbor's car, and it blows up. Well, the next day, the neighbors are there, and they're working on that car, and, and it's just perfectly fine. So uh, we, we had a good laugh at that one. The other part of this movie that I was just like, ugh. The guy who plays General Souter, I'm sure he's a good actor, and it, maybe it was just the material he was given, but he is very Broadway in this thing. Uh, everything he delivers is like this, and I uh, just, I didn't buy that character. Didn't really care for him all that much. Um, I do like there at the end, whenever uh, Charlie, he's got that power glove looking thing on, and he grabs General Suter by the nuts, and he turns into this giant alien predator looking thing um, and attacks Shep. Shep's like, no! <laughs> That's kind of a funny scene, but I do like the attention to detail put into that suit, and that kind of helped, you know, with the aliens make it a, a pretty good finale. Um, speaking of the space stuff, uh, the very beginning of the movie, I thought the effects weren't all that good, you know, where they're shooting and you got kind of the Star Wars scenes. And, uh, those effects just don't hold up. But overall, you know, after all these years, I wasn't sure if I would like Suburban Commando. And I definitely don't like it as much as I did as a kid, you know, now that I look at films from a different perspective and I'm, I'm an adult. But I do think there's a lot of fun to be had here. And I think if you look at it, you know, with an open mind and go in just to have fun, um, you can't have a lot of fun with this movie. On IMDb, this movie is a 4.5. And you know me and IMDb, um, I'm always quite a bit higher than them. Uh, I can't go 6. But I do think this movie is probably like a 5.8. 5 and 3 quarter, 5.8, somewhere there. Like I said, have fun with it. There's some good acting there, uh, you know, from the that Charlie Wilcox character, Christopher Lloyd. And Hogan does just enough uh, not to bring the movie down. So yeah, 5.8 seems fair to me for Suburban Commando. Uh, let me know what you think of this movie down in the comments. And if you'd like to see me cover more Hulk Hogan movies, um, No Holds Barred definitely is coming one of these days. Guys, as always, I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to watch this review. Uh, the channel's really growing. Uh, I appreciate every one of you guys out there. And if you do like what you see, be sure and give this a like and a subscribe. And as always, I've been Andrew, and I'll see you down the line.